Hello and welcome to today's lesson on similarity. It's going to cover the topics in geometry in the standard 2.4 and also the study island topic that is called similarity. Um, similarity, if two shapes are similar, that means they have the same shape but they're different sizes. So it's like you use the copy machine but you press enlarge and or you press shrink and those images that you get would be similar. They're the same shape, but a different size. So these questions that we're gonna go over today, you're gonna to see about four of them on the EOI. And as we're going through, remember anytime you have a new vocabulary word to add that to your set of flashcards that hopefully you're keeping to help you to learn all these new vocabulary words in geometry. And you also wanna make sure you're taking really good notes. So if you need to pause, rewind, fast forward, um, so that you can keep up. You're more than welcome to do any of those things. And you can also pause at the beginning of a question, work it out, and see if you and I get the same answer so that you can start to see where you're making mistakes or if you're doing a really great job. Um, but I'm super excited that you're here and let's go ahead and take some notes. Great, so first let's define similar. So if you have interior angles of two polygons that are congruent, so here A is congruent with E, B is congruent to F, D is congruent to H, and C is congruent to G, and the lengths of their corresponding sides are proportional, then two polygons are similar. So what proportional means is if I create fractions or ratios of the sides and they have to be corresponding sides. So here, four and two, I put four over two. And the order that you don't you do it doesn't matter. You just need to be consistent. I typically do on the top, the one on the left, and on the bottom, the one on the right. So I've, then I'd put five over two and a half, six over three, and seven over three and a half. And if I do the division, or if I simplify these fractions, they're going to simplify to the same number. So four over two, simplifies to 2. 5 over 2.5 simplifies to 2. 6 over 3 simplifies to 2. And 7 over 3.5 simplifies to 2. They all have this other sides all have a same ratio. So that's what it means to be proportional. And then we have three ways to prove that triangles or any shapes are proportional or similar. And one is, as you know, all of the angles are equal. So you have angles that are corresponding that are congruent. You can prove that all three sides are proportional just like I did up here. Or you can prove that you have an angle that is equal and then the two sides that create that angle are proportional. Or two, then the one way to think about it is you have two sides that are proportional and then that included or adjacent angles is equal. So here it gives us two triangles and we know that M is 13 and a half and N is seven and a half, P is nine and Q is five. It wants us to say, how do we know that these are similar? Well, AA is saying that the ang that you know two angles are congruent. Well, I only know one angle, this right angle, so it can't be A. The triangle is similar by SSS. That's saying I know that all three sides are proportional. Well, I don't know this third side. Um, I could use Pythagorean theorem to figure it out, but we're gonna see if maybe SAS is better. And SAS is saying that you know the two sides are proportional with an included angle, which could happen here, because I know two angle measures here or two side measures here with that included angle. So I'm going to see if these are actually proportional. So 13.5, and this side here is bigger than the 7.5, so it's going to correspond to my bigger number over here, which is 9. And then I have 7.5, and, and that corresponds to 5, and I'm going to go ahead and do that division. 13.5 divided by 9 is 1.5 and 7.5 divided by 5 is also 1.5 so they are proportional so it is going to be C 
In the triangle below, angle M and angle N are congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and put congruent marks on angle M and N. Using the information given on the triangles, determine which, how the triangles are similar. So here I have angles, one set of angles that are congruent, and then I also have these vertical angles that are also congruent, that are marked out. So that means my triangles are going to be similar by AA because I have two pairs of angles that are congruent. Alright, so here they give me triangles and they give me these side lengths, which I went ahead and added already to the triangles. And it wants to know how can I know that they're similar. Well, AA and SAS take knowing something about an angle. So right away I know it can't be C and it can't be D because I'm not given any information about the angles. So I want to see if I can make all of the sides be proportional. So my largest side in this triangle is 25 and the largest one is 10. So I'm going to put those over top of each other, 25 over 10. My middle lengths are 20, 22 and a half and 9. So I'm going to put those two on top of each other in a ratio. And then my smallest length are 12 and a half and 5, so I'm going to make a ratio of those two. Being consistent, always put the left triangle on top and the right triangle on the bottom. So when I go ahead and do those divisions, 25 divided by 10 is 2 and a half, 22 and a half divided by 9 is 2 and a half, so I'm on track. And then last, 12 and a half by 5 is 2 and a half also. So they are proportional because their ratios reduce to the same number. So I can prove that they're similar by SSS. Okay, so in this problem, it tells us that T is 2, which I already wrote, 8 is W, and U is 13, and it wants to know what is the length of Z, so I put a question mark there. And it also tells us that the triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADE. That's what this means here. This little tilde, the little squiggly, that means similar. That's the symbol for similar in geometry. When I have overlapping shapes like this, I like to draw them separate. I think it's just easier to visualize what's going on in the problem. So I drew triangle ADE and I labeled this side 8 and 2, and then I did ABC over here, and I had the bottom is 13, and then this side is 8 plus some number, the question mark, that I'm looking for. Well, I know they're similar, so I know my sides are proportional. They're going to eat, I can set up a proportion to solve for it. So my bottom side's 2 over 13. I put the smaller triangle over the larger triangle, and I kept the corresponding sides in the same ratio. And I can set that equal to the other sides I know. So I know that I have this smaller triangle on top, so I have an 8 there. And I have the larger triangle on the bottom, and this is 8 plus some number. But instead of just having a question mark, I'm going to put 8 plus x, because that's what I'm looking for. And so since I know they're similar, I can set up this proportion, and I can go ahead and solve it for x. So to solve a proportion, I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to have... 2 times all of the bottom. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. And that equals 13 times 8, which is 104. So I'm going to have to distribute this 2. So 2 times 8 is 16 plus 2x equals 104. And now it's a two-step equation, so I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. These 16s cancel out, and I'm left with 2x equals and 104 minus 16 is 88. Divide 2 from both sides. These 2s cancel, and x equals 88 divided by 2 is 44. So that x is what I was looking for here, so my answer is C. Right, this problem, I have a rectangle EFGH similar to rectangle MNOP. So I went ahead and drew those two rectangles out and labeled the corners, making sure that I was consistent since I went E, started with E here and went clockwise around the rectangle. I started with N here and went clockwise. You have to be consistent like that when you are drawing shapes from names. 
So I have the length EF is 16. And the perimeter of this is equal to 48. And I have the length of 3.2 is MN. And the I want to know what is the area of this shape. Well, I'm going to kind of have to work my way to area. In order to find the area here, I need to find this side here. But And if I can find out what this side is, then I can make a proportion to solve for it. So how could I find this side? Well, I know the perimeter of this shape. So if I know that this is 16, I know that this side across from it is also 16. And I know that these two sides are also congruent. So 16 plus 16 is 32. So if I take 48 and subtract 32, what I've already used up of the perimeter, that gives me 16. So I have 16 inches left to evenly distribute between these two sides. So that means if I divide 16 by 2, that's 8 and 8. So that means those are the four sides of this rectangle. And now that I know this side, I can set up a proportion to solve for this side. So I'm going to put my left rectangle on top. So I have 16, and that corresponds to 3.2. So my right triangle on the bottom, a rectangle, and that's going to equal 8 over x. I'm going to solve a proportion. I'm going to cross multiply. So 16 times x is 16x. And then 8 times 3.2 is 25.6. And then I just divide both sides by 16. And x equals 1.6. So that means this side here is 1.6. And now that I finally know these two sides, I can find the area which is going to be 3.2 times 1.6, because my area formula of a rectangle is length times width, and that's going to be 5.12 inches squared as my final answer, which is A. Okay, this example reads, Sonia's Chris sketching a circular pool of her backyard. So I just went ahead and drew a circular pool, drawn with the ratio of 1 centimeter equals 3 feet. If the diameter of the sketch is 12 centimeters, so I drew in a diameter of 12, what is the area of the pool? So I know the area formula for a circle is pi r squared. So that means I need to find the radius of the actual pool because this is 12 centimeters. This is the diameter of the sketch. So if that's the diameter, I'm going to go ahead and say that the radius is 6 centimeters of the sketch. So I also have a ratio of one centimeter to three feet. So I can use that as one side of my proportion because it's a ratio which just means a fraction and I know that the sketch is six centimeters and I want to convert that to what it is in feet on the actual pool. So I'm going to set up this proportion and I'm going to solve it. So I'm going to cross multiply. 1 times x is x and 3 times 6 is 18. So that means that the actual radius of the pool is going to be 18. So then I can take my 18 and substitute that into my area formula. So it tells me in the problem to use pi as 3.14. So I'm going to, instead of writing pi, I'm going to write 3.14. And that's times the radius, which I just found is 18 squared. So first, in order to find that, I'm going to take 18 squared, which is 324. And then I still have that times the 3.14. And when I multiply those two numbers, I'm going to get 1017.36. And then my units here is feet squared. So my answer is D. 
Right, so this one here wants to know which pair of facts proves that triangle DEF and QPN are similar. Well, that means if I tell you two of these things, can, which one will give you one of our similarity shortcuts to prove that it is similar? So I could have SSS, SAS, or AA. So A, just knowing two sides are congruent, well, knowing sides are congruent doesn't help us with similarity at all, so it's not going to be A. B, once again, knowing a side is congruent doesn't help us up, but we have to know that they're proportional. Same with C, we have to know that they're proportional, okay, but knowing two angles are congruent, that's helpful, that's AA, angle, angle, so my answer here is going to be D. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something new.